Well, good morning and uh, welcome to St. Barnabas Church, Eisted Rise. If this is your first time of connecting with us, then a big welcome to you. It's great to have you here with us this morning for our time of worship and spiritual communion. Well, we are here today to give thanks to God for all his amazing blessings, to draw close to him, uh, but also in worship. Even though we are fragmented at this time, we are still here together in spirit here on Sunday morning. And um, yeah, we're here to worship and uh, we're going to start by saying some words together, which we find on the sheet. In fact, we're still in the Easter season. So we're going to start off by saying, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let's just try that again, shall we? Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, we start by saying this prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to start our worship this morning with one of the most beautiful and most amazing hymns of worship ever written. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, let's worship together. <laughs> I see the 
God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Just before we say these words together, let's just be quiet and ask the Holy Spirit just to remind us, show us what we might have done this week that might have been displeasing to God the Father. say together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're now going to continue our worship as we think about who our God is. This is our God and his amazing grace. Let's worship together. I think we started with the wrong song there, didn't we? Yeah. Should we start Should again? Keep my eyes on the music more, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not singing that song first, are we? Sorry. <laughs>
Jesus, the name which everybody in heaven and earth will bow down to, the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us right now. And we pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come upon us. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Well, 
as uh, as we know, <coughs> no church services uh, the same without notices. So I just thought, um, well, just some reflections really on the VE Day celebrations that happened on Friday. What do you think, Catherine? What what do you have any particular reflections on on Friday at all? Um, yes, I, I I watched some of the the um, the morning presentation just before eleven o'clock and the, the the program after that, and I thought it was um, very stirring and very emotional to mm. remember the sacrifice. Yep. And uh, how important it is that we still remember it, mm. you know, um, because there are people still serving today to keep mm. peace throughout the world. Um, but also, I thought the way that they linked it to the common, mm. uh, the common day, the day now that mm. we're going through, was also um, made it very special, actually, mm. and would help unite us, even though we can't be together. Um, and that was great. And uh, I visited someone in the morning and, and dropped a few tomato plants off. And uh, their street was all getting ready to share some food and have a time together. And, mm. and that was lovely, even with all the social distancing. And, you know, in the afternoon here on a, on the Avenue, Upper Avenue, we uh, had our own little bit of time in the afternoon sharing. And also, you know, to be blessed with such wonderful weather so that we can be outside, mm. so that we can meet, even at a distance, um, you know, our neighbours, the people in our area. It was, it was, it was good. Yeah. It's great, yeah. I mean, it's just incredible, really. I don't know about on your streets, um, but we seem to be talking to our neighbours more than we've ever done before. Um, and certainly yesterday, we we had um, we were socialising, having teas and coffees. Some were having barbecues, um, it, and, and we could see if you go on Isted Rise alerts on the Facebook page, you can see um, so many of the streets in Isted Rise um, were celebrating in in many different ways and it was great even people were walking around and we were able to talk to people as they as they walked around the community it was fantastic and it was just great to hang out and I think the two minute silence in, in the morning was very powerful on television all those uh, images and memories and, yeah. and very powerful to see uh, Charles and Camilla um, uh, marking the, the two minute silence themselves up in Scotland very 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 powerful uh, we've also got some other news um, and I think I put it on the email that um, our youth group, uh, the PCC have given permission for our youth group to uh, use uh, Zoom to meet. So we're hoping in the next few weeks that our youth, our young people will be able to meet uh, and with Jenny and Julian uh, leading that and giving them some input and uh, ability to, to fellowship together. Also, I'm not sure if uh, residents of I uh, members of the church know that a new website was actually launched on Friday for the community of Ice Did Rise. Uh, the, the web address is urkatoday.com, urka, I-R-C-A, today.com. So do check that out. Lots of news about, about the community and what's going on in the life of Ice Did Rise. And um, I, th I think that's it, isn't it? For, um, I think that probably is for today. Is that this it? Morning? Is yeah. there nothing missing, Catherine? Nothing you're missing that, uh, you know, we've had the last few weeks? Is it? Oh, I can't think of anything. No, you? no so, not really. No? No. no, no. Oh. So you don't want a joke then? Oh, a joke. Well, we could have a joke or two, couldn't we? We might be able to, yes. So, Catherine, <coughs> um, what did the leopard say after lunch? I don't know. What did the leopard say after lunch? That hit the spot. Okay, waiter, how often do you change the tablecloths in this restaurant? I don't know, sir. I've only been here six months. Okay, what is the difference between a platypus and a pile of carrots? You know the difference? I you? have no idea the difference. No. One is a funny beast and the other is a bunny feast. <laughs> That's probably enough jokes for today, isn't it? Well, I think we better uh, continue our service, actually. And... Um, are you happy to do the Bible reading this morning, Catherine? I am happy to do the yeah, Bible Yeah, we come to our Bible reading. Um, so I hand over to Catherine. Our Bible reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 to 42. The sign of Jonah. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, a wicked and adulterous nation asks for a sign. Sorry, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign. But none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and now something greater than Solomon is here. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, this morning uh, we're doing things slightly differently. Uh, the service has been recorded and uh, we're, we're now going to hear a sermon from our reader, Jeff Everest. Good morning. In our reading, some of the leaders ask Jesus for a sign, but he tells them the only sign he will give them is the sign of Jonah. He spent three days in the belly of a fish. Likewise, Jesus himself will spend three days in the heart of the earth. At the time, they probably wouldn't have understood this. And quite possibly, still wouldn't understand it, even after it had happened. As I was pondering on this, I started to think about signs generally. Signs are all around us. They are very important. The government especially takes them very seriously. And they've tried to make sure that wherever we are in the UK, the signs for driving are the same. But sometimes signs can be confusing or even misinterpreted. What about this sign? It's well known today, thanks to social media. It's now taken to mean like. But I'm one of these people, like many others, who were brought up thinking that this sign was a sign that was used in ancient Rome when gladiators were fighting. And we were told that this sign meant that the defeated gladiator could live. Trouble is, I was reading recently, that might not be the case. That that sign may actually be an indication to the victor that he has the emperor's permission to finish off his opponent. You wouldn't really want to get that one wrong, would you? Other signs, like, that means okay usually, but there are places in the world where if you give that sign, it is a terrible insult. What about this sign? We take that to mean yes, or to mean no. But there are places in the world when this means no, and that means yes. There are, as we all know, if we drive in cars, many other hand signs and gestures, mostly to show one driver's disapproval of someone else but I'm not going to dwell on those this morning. All this is about highlighting that signs and gestures are not universal. They mean different things to different people. There is, however, one sign that I have noticed and I've noticed it in several countries in the world. I've not been all around the world, but the countries I've been in, it seems to be common. The sign I'm gonna to try to show you, but unfortunately I need both arms to do it. 
So you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit and imagine my left arm is doing the same as what my right arm is doing. So this is the same. Hands outstretched, arms open. We see it very often in the arrivals hall of airports. I want you to use your imagination now. Imagine somebody that you love very much has been away for a long time. I don't just mean weeks or months, I mean years. And you're going to pick them up from the airport. So as you stand in the arrivals hall, you're scanning all the faces of people going by. And then to see the face of the one you love. And you give another sign. Hello, it's me, I'm over here. And they may give you a sign back. This time it means, okay, I can see you. And so you wait as they come through and out of the gate. And as you get closer to them, that's when your arms go out to them. And as you get closer and closer and meet face to face, those arms then go round in an embrace. And it's often, a, uh, often accompanied by a kiss. But what does this sign mean? I've thought about it. And I've come up with three things. This sign. We hold out to loved ones. And what I've come up with, come to me. I love you. I want to hold you in my arms. As I picture this, I'm reminded of the parable of the prodigal son. When the father saw him from a distance, he ran to him. And I don't doubt that as he got close, he made use of this sign as well, because we are told that when they got together, the father embraces him and kisses him. The meaning the same. Come to me. I love you. I want to hold you in my arms. But what about if there's more than one person? What if there's two? Well, it's the same side, but just a little bit further over. Or a family. Well, perhaps over a little bit further. What about if it's the whole world? How far can you stretch out your arms? Does this remind you of anybody? Think of a hill just outside Jerusalem and a man nailed to a cross who is asking his father to forgive those who are crucifying him. That message is the same. Come to me. I love you. I want to hold you in my arms. I wonder, do we think that it is just a coincidence that Christ died this way? Or do we perhaps think that it was just a part of God's perfect plan? In our communion service, we sometimes say these words. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. Last week, excuse me, last week Andrew gave us a reading in his sermon. A reading from Isaiah 43. I'm not going to read it again, but I do encourage you to look it up afterwards. Because in this reading, God is speaking to his people 
through the prophet Isaiah. He is still speaking to his people today. In case you're not sure, that is you and me. And what he's saying to us is he loves us. And he would give anything to ransom us. He makes reference to Egypt, Cush and Seba, which represented the then known world. So what God is saying in this passage in effect is, I love you and I would give the world for you. I've taken the liberty of shortening this passage into one sentence. Here it is. I hope you can all see it. I'll read it. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight and because I love you. In a moment, I'm going to invite you to say those words with me. But you will notice that the words by name are in italics and surrounded by brackets. That is because when we get to that part, I would like you to say your own name instead. So I will say, I have called you Jeffrey. Let's give it a try. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine, since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you. And because I got it wrong, I'm going to say it again. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you, Jeffrey, and you are mine, since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you. As we allow these words to sink into our consciousness, as we begin to grasp the meaning to us personally, as this happens, we begin to see those arms held out on the cross begin to move. And they begin to move in together until they are pointing directly at you. And the message is, come to me. I love you. I want to hold you in my arms. All preachers are aware that their sermons are going to be mostly forgotten. Sometimes even before the end of the service. But what we hope no, what we pray is that just one thing will be remembered. One thing that will make a difference. Friends, if you forget everything else I say this morning, remember this. You are loved by God and he invites you to come to him because he loves you. And because he wants to hold you in his arms. But it would be a miss of me, having spoken of God's love, not to relate this to our current situation. And I am aware that there are many who are asking, where is God's love in all? Well, like those early leaders, we perhaps are looking for a miracle. But we are in danger 
of missing the miracle that is already there before us. The love of God is shown through every NHS worker who put themselves in the line to care for those affected. It is shown for those members of the emergency service who still come out to us in time of need. It is shown in all those carers employed in care homes around the country and the thousands of unpaid carers who are looking after loved ones in their own homes. It is shown through those neighbours who pop round and from a safe distance say, can we get you anything at the shop while we're there? It is shown in all the delivery drivers who continue to bring the things that we need. And it is shown through all those people that telephone us just to see if we're okay and to ask if we need anything. In short, it is shown through the millions of kindly, unselfish acts that happen every single day around us. Of course, there are some who will say, that's not God, that's us. But it is the love of God working in and through us. It is the miracle we need to see. But I cannot ignore the millions, thousands of deaths caused by this virus, thousands of our loved ones. God knows the anguish, sorrow and devastation we feel at the loss of our loved ones. And his heart goes out to us. But God does not see death in the same way that we do. We see it as the end, the end of life. God sees it as a transformation. A new beginning. We have evidence of it all around us. The trees that a few months ago seemed dead and lifeless, now resplendent in the new growth of leaves. The land that not so long ago was frozen and hard, now bursts forth with spring flowers. And yes, weeds. They are part of it as well. They are part of life. We can see a chrysalis. Seemingly lifeless. But then transforms into a beautiful butterfly. Yes. We can just see the end but only God can see the beautiful creation we become. Let us pray. I wish to say a short prayer on behalf of us all, and you may wish to add your own. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your great love for me. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we just say thank you, Jeff, for your words this morning. And it's lovely to hear you speaking and sharing wisdom with us today. Over to you, Andrew. Okay, it's now time for our time of intercession. So let's, uh, let's come before the Lord, ready to pray. Father God, we give you thanks today. And we give you thanks, especially for this bank holiday weekend. We give you thanks for the VE Day celebrations on Friday. 
for our chance to stop and reflect and think about that amazing victory that the Allied forces were able to win in 1945 for the world and for Europe. And we thank you, Lord, for the chance to celebrate with neighbours and with friends. And we also thank you, Lord, for the message from the Queen on Friday. And we pray especially, Lord, for the Queen and the royal family and ask for your protection for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders. And we pray especially for Boris Johnson and the government and for Boris Johnson's speech tonight on television, which will start to communicate to us about how we are going to progress with a with the um, with uh, less of the lockdown and uh, the changes to enable our country to start to move back to normality. We know, Lord, that it's going to be a long time, a long journey of relaxation of all that we have uh, had to live with over the last seven or eight weeks. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our yeah. prayer. We pray, Lord, for the NHS and those who work in care homes. We pray, Lord, for your protection, your wisdom, and for strength for those who work in that sector. And we pray also, Lord, for those who are grieving loved ones who have died, Lord, over the last few weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now especially and remember Kirsty, Barry, Bob, Jenny, Beryl, Chris, Tommy, Paul, Graham, Jeff, Joyce, Gay, Mary, Katie, Tom, Ryan, Jane, and Mary. Lord, we pray you will bring your healing and your encouragement to each and every one of those we've mentioned, Lord, this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray also for Justin Welby, John Sentamu, Bishop James and Bishop Simon, and we pray especially for Bishop James as he has the coronavirus. But we pray, Lord, for our bishops as they too help the church make the changes that we can start making to bring some sense of normality back to our lives. Lord, help us all to make the journey over the coming weeks and months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for St. Barnabas, for our witness here in Eisted Rise. Help us to connect to you, help us to connect others, help us to grow, help us to serve you, Lord God, in all the unique ways we can. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord, right now. Fill us with your Spirit. Lord, wherever we need encouragement, wherever we need feeding, inspiration, Lord, whatever we need from you, Lord, fill us with your Spirit so that we can be your witnesses to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're now coming to our uh, time of spiritual communion. So we say together, Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy, Lord have mercy. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We join in the Lord's prayer together by saying, Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the and glory the are yours, now and forever. Amen. Give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus, and ask him to be with you now. We say together, thanks, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ for all, all the, the benefits, benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have, you have borne for me, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally. I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O oh, most, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others, and keep us in your care. Amen. We're now going to sing our final hymn of worship this morning, Thine Be the Glory. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.